INA uh, on Squash Bowl's leadership bit is that it represented uh, people who felt liberated from almost a hundred years of mental slavery which the British had imposed on India. See, Swash was uh, represented a person who, who was a liberated Indian. He qualified in ICS, he was a brilliant student, and he threw it away. Um, I don't think there's a comparable leader uh, who uh, performed academically so well amongst the political leaders as Swash Bose. Um, so uh, Swash Bose's uh, contribution through the INA was that he created a cadre of people who thought of nation first. And most of his slogans today fired the imagination of the Indian. Jai Hind is his. Um, and uh, Dilli Chalo is another. Um, but more important is that Subhash Bose was a thinker. So he spoke about what we are fighting for, not only to drive the British, but what will happen afterwards. Economic planning is actually Subhash Bose's uh, brainchild. This is not Jawaharlal Nehru's. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru may have taken credit, but it was Subhash Bose who in 1938 introduced the concept that India must uh, do economic planning. Uh, Subhash Bose's uh, uh, contribution to mind control, spiritualism, uh, uh, he at one stage at very high, uh, toyed the idea of becoming a monk in Ramakrishna Math. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, look at what his uh, mind control is. He boarded a submarine in uh, Germany and went all the way around the Cape of Good Hope, all the way up to Singapore and then to Tokyo. Imagine the journey in a foreign uh, submarine ship and being going undetected uh, in, uh, at the time of World War II when he could have easily been sunk. That requires mind control. I mean, look, imagine just sitting 24 hours a day in a place and not being depressed or, you know, uh, become reckless and so on. That mind control. And um, so I think he, he also exemplified what he taught and the INA went through very, very bad conditions of during the war. The Japanese were not able to sustain the support uh, uh, in, when they reached India. So and Japan itself was losing. But at no stage uh, uh, the uh, INA ever was known as, a, as, a, as, a, as an army which didn't die fighting. So I think uh, the uh, contribution of INA will always be remembered in history as the catalyst. See, the, the term catalyst in chemistry is that you are part of a, a chemical process but you're not uh, uh, merged into it. The same way the INA was not part of the Gandhian uh, nonviolence movement. But you accelerated the thought process, and I think uh, the dedication, sacrifice, valor, these are things which today we proudly look back when we think of the INA. So Dr. Swami, your views on um, the fact that there is a, a Japanese soldiers are um, who are associated with the INA, yes. uh, they are doing a reunion in uh, memory sure. of Netaji. Sure. What do you think about this event? Well, it's necessary because um, after all, it was a revolutionary time. Uh, of course, Japan lost the war, so many people don't want to remember many things about Japan. But in India, we have uh, always had a soft corner for the assistance given by Japan to Swachat Bose. And uh, we, this is reflected by the fact that we are the only country which didn't seek reparations from Japan after World War II. Um, now, uh, Subhash Bose um, did what was considered impossible in those days, that he collected at least 50,000 soldiers. And uh, these soldiers were those who were defeated 
uh, while they were part of the British Army or some who have volunteered and so on. And he built it into an army which temporarily did uh, liberate India. Indian national flag was first unfurled in Port Blair in Andamans, then later on in uh, Nagaland and Manipur, etc. And uh, well, certainly uh, Subhash Bhaks was not able to drive out the British from India physically. But uh, all political revolutions are not physical, uh, physical successes. They, it depends on what they do to the mind. In Rajasthan, uh, Rana Pratap did not win the major battles. Uh, and, but he lived quite badly. He was badly persecuted. So he ultimately had to live in a forest and um, you know, make chapatis out of dried grass. But today in Rajasthan, people remember Rana Pratap for his valor. And we have uh, throughout history always placed valor, courage, sacrifice above victory. Victory also we, we respect, but that comes second. Take for example, uh, besides Rana Pratap, you go to any other part of India, you go to uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, there is a man called Katabamun Raja, who the British hanged in public. He is respected. Uh, and if you ask who fought the British, they will first give the name of uh, um, Katabaman. You go to Karnataka, Rani Chennama, uh, Rani Jhansi. Uh, these people all lost. And Subhash Bose may have lost, but he created so much fear in the British that but for him, the British would not have left India. The British decision to leave India, and you can imagine the atmosphere at that time, Britain had won World War II. They were, had been perceived as one of the most powerful countries of the world. And the man who led it uh, was Winston Churchill. At that time, he was still Prime Minister. He hadn't been defeated in the election. So at that time, the name of Subhash Bose is what revived India. Because Quit India movement had great effect on the mind of the people, but it was a failure. And uh, the spirits of in Indian freedom fighters was down in 1944. And after the British won the war, it was even more down. Because uh, people thought that the British would be defeated and then we will get freedom. But actually the British won the war. But uh, when the naval forces, the INA trials, <coughs> these, uh, the British saw the atmosphere that had uh, been built and the name of Subhash Bose uh, instilled so much uh, uh, devotion that at that stage, as Payment Attlee told later on a private visit to India in 1948, he told the Chief Justice of Calcutta High Court uh, that uh, it was Subhash Bose's threat, <coughs> Subhash Bose's threat which actually uh, made them decide now we have to leave. Mahatma Gandhi was convenient because they could hand the power to him. And they knew that Mahatma Gandhi would not chase him. And therefore somehow Subhash Bose's uh, legacy must be aborted. And, uh, but we have to leave anyway because it's only a matter of time before in the name of Subhash Bose, uh, the whole country will go up in, uh, in arms. And then the British are no match. You see, the British are always in small numbers. I mean, even at the height of World War II, there were only 100,000. Generally, there were 15,000, 20,000. Now, if India rose as one, then the British knew that 10,000, 20,000 troops is nothing. So it's really the mind. And that's what Subhash Bos liberated. You know, Mahatma Gandhi did it in his own way. But Subhash Bos fired the imagination of people. And, uh, and the, the revolt of the uh, mutiny, uh, the revolt of the navy, uh, the revolt of soldiers in different parts of the country, that scared the British to leave. So I would say that uh, Subhash Bose has, the, uh, along with Mahatma Gandhi, because Mahatma Gandhi built an organization. Subhash Bose didn't have uh, time to build an organization or the opportunity. In fact, when he was elected president of the Congress, he was literally made to leave it. But uh, the, the uh, 
fact of the matter is that Subhash Bose did what was the most important in any country, the mindset. As you know, people will be, we can fight, that the spirit he will still. The great tragedy that we still don't know what happened to Subhash Bose. And uh, <clears throat> we know that he didn't die in the air crash. What really happened, the, some of the stories we have heard are very disturbing. And the fact that the governments consistently refused to declassify files shows that there's something rotten that had happened, which made Subhash Bose disappear. And, uh, but his memory will live on forever. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, functions like such as re, uh, uh, reunif reunification or the uh, getting together of, of former soldiers who served with Subhash Bose is, is being happening in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo uh, is a place which was dear to Subhash Bose and therefore dear to India. And, uh, and I would congratulate the organizers for thinking of this. INA uh, and Subhash Bose's leadership of it is that it represented uh, people who felt liberated from almost a hundred years of mental slavery which the British had imposed on in India. See, Subhash Bose uh, represented a person who contribution through the INA was that he created a cadre of people who thought of nation first. And most of his slogans today fired the imagination of the Indian. Jai Hind is his. Um, and uh, Dilli Chalo is another. Um, but more important is that Subhash Bose was a thinker. So he spoke about what we are fighting for, not only to drive the British, but what will happen afterwards. Economic planning is actually Subhash Bose's uh, brainchild. This is not Jawaharlal Nehru's. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru may have taken credit, but it was Subhash Bose who in 1938 introduced the concept that India must do economic planning. Uh, who was a liberated Indian. He qualified in ICS. He was a brilliant student. And he threw it away. Uh, I don't think there's a comparable leader uh, who uh, performed academically so well amongst the political leaders as Swash was. Um, so uh, Subhash Bose's, uh, Subhash Bose's uh, uh, contribution to mind control, spiritualism, uh, uh, he at one stage had very high, uh, toyed the idea of becoming a monk in Ramakrishna Mat. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, look at what his, uh, what his mind control is. He boarded a submarine in uh, Germany and went all the way 